You are tuned in to another edition of Americana Music Profiles, brought to you by Americana Rhythm Music Magazine and AmericanaMusicMagazine.com. I'm your host, Greg Tutwiler. Let's jump right in to the next exciting interview. John Vento says he's a bit of a late bloomer when it comes to performing music professionally, but that hasn't stopped him from finding his groove as an independent Americana singer-songwriter. John's 2019 release, Love, Lust, and Other Wreckage, received the IMEA Award for Best Americana Album in 2019. He is also a 2019 Billboard Magazine Emerging Artist. John is my guest on this edition of Americana Music Profiles as we talk about his music and his latest release. Hello, John. Welcome to the podcast. Good evening. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for jumping on and um, giving us a chance to talk to you about your music and uh, your career. You've got a a new record on the way that we want to talk about here in a couple minutes and a unique way of getting that out to the folks. But um, I thought if uh, if we could maybe maybe take us back just a bit. Tell me tell me about your your journey in music, how you how you got started in the first place, how this became something that's a big part of your life. Sure, sure. I'm, I guess I'm kind of a late bloomer. Not, not kind of, but I am. Okay. Even though in, in my younger days I dabbled with a couple cover bands here and there, and I wasn't very good and all that stuff. The musicians were good. I was pretty much horrible. And then, you know, I decide that that's not the path I'm going to take, and you know, the family and young children and so on. But the music thing was always kind of deep, deep, deep within me. And then in my early 40s, I uh, started to write, uh, poems slash lyrics. Okay. And I turned to some musicians that I knew in order to um, have composition and musical composition and and create original music, and that was the beginning of the, of the, the tidal wave and the craziness. And I've never stopped since. I'm, you know, that was 19 years ago, 18 years ago. Wow. And I've constantly am recording or performing or writing, and now uh, uh, it's now a daily, almost a daily activity to to work on creating um um you know music in, in one way or another were you able to or have you been in a position where you've been able to call this a, a full-time thing or did you always keep some sort of no, day no, job no i'm not it, it is a full-time thing but i'm blessed i'm a business owner and have been for a long time okay and i have a great staff so i have a ton of freedom so i certainly would not call it a full-time thing but my fellow uh, corporate workers would probably call it a full-time thing. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> they would probably say it's way more of a full-time thing than we want it to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. But each, I, I, I would say that uh, there's a percentage of every day that's devoted to music, often a significant percentage. Right. But, uh, you know, to, to uh, disrespect my friends in the music world and, and here even locally in Pittsburgh that are grinding every day uh, and, tr- and attempting or, or are making a living right. through music, that's not me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, frankly, that damages my own credibility. Um, years ago, a friend of mine who was a local, uh, local rock station DJ, I went to him with some of my material and he said, uh, "This stuff's as good as anything out there, but you're not in it for real." Hmm. He said, "When you when you quit your job and you buy an old van and you start, you know, banging away at gigs uh, on a regional basis, call me then." Hmm. And, you know, he didn't he didn't mean it in a, in a in a detrimental way. He was just being very very honest. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, you just can't dip your toe in the water. So, even though I'm very serious about the music and. Uh, Creating great music is a priority, and performing is a priority. Uh, I certainly haven't, you know, just dove into the deep end like a lot of other folks have. Well, you've been at it a while, and you mm-hmm. um, must be getting uh, have developed a fan base to encourage you to continue to do that. So, I guess I would argue that you you are making your mark. Uh, you know, if you if you're writing songs and putting them on uh, putting them on records and, and um, encouraging people, and people are are, are encouraging you by by taking. Uh, consuming that music in some capacity, uh, and and I see where you've gotten a few uh, pieces of notoriety for some of the work that you've done. So um, you know, yeah, I, I, we we have. We, you know, thank you for saying that. And 
and that is true. And last year we were uh, our la- our last album released, Love Lost Another Wreckage, won the 2019 um, Independent Music Award. Yeah, with IMEA, that yeah. was a big deal. Yeah. And then we had a couple tracks that in I in the independent charts, iTunes independent charts went up, did, did real well. So. Uh, yeah, I, I think at this point in my life, the next step would be uh, once this whole COVID monster is behind us, hopefully soon, uh, is possibly you know putting together a little a short tour, buying an old van and, and yeah. quitting your day job and going on yeah. tour, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, that's exactly one hundred percent of what I would want to do. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, go out for a couple of weeks and sure, like kind of the blues guys that yeah. I know they, they do. You know, they come yeah. through town, right? Hey, there's guys that, that uh, are weekend warriors. Sure, I mean, I'm not going to name names, but you you would know them. Yeah, these yeah. are national artists with great hit records that fly out on a Thursday night. They do some pretty big shows, and they're home on Sunday night. Sure, yeah. Well, I I do a lot of work with a lot of artists in the bluegrass industry, and and that's kind of mm-hmm. the, their. Uh, many of them that call themselves full time are working Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, and maybe yep. a Sunday afternoon show. So in that sense, even if they're they're uh, prior to the pandemic, we're, we're calling themselves full time. A lot of them were were weekend warriors, and they spent the middle of the week calling it their weekend and hanging out with their family and changing the oil in a bus and you know, writing new songs and that kind of thing. So yeah, I, I mean, yep. most of the music like that, you know, unless you're doing the pub scene, it happens on the weekends. And so yeah, I could I could see that. Yeah, I mean that's. I'm I'm more familiar with the blues players because we have a great blues club here in Pittsburgh called Moon Dogs, and it's been around for thirty years. And I'm always surprised, and I'll talk to the, the players, and I'll say, "Wow, how long have you been on the road?" And they're like, "We left Indiana on Thursday." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, we got a gig tonight in Pittsburgh. Yeah, tomorrow yeah. night in Buffalo, New York, and yeah. uh, Sunday afternoon in Cleveland, and then we drive home. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, that's 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 what we do, <laughs> you know. So only we we do it within a hundred mile radius. Sure, yeah. So, so what what um, what pulled you to uh, Americana? That sound. How did that become well, your thing? I'm in a fantastic band called the Needs Hotel Band here in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and we're pretty well known. Uh, we received some recognition in in our region. Uh, Needs Hotel is, is a different kind of spelling, N-I-E-D-S. Okay. So it's the Needs Hotel band. It's a big seven-piece rock and roll R&B band with a sax, great sax player, great ah, keyboard cool. player, okay. a huge sound. So when I drift away from the band and work, work on my own or collaborate with others away from the band, I go as far away from that sound as possible. Mm. So I dabble with bluegrass country, um, more, not more, but primarily acoustic bass, a whole lot less production, Mm -hmm. often no drummer. Um, My live performances with this kind of music is just a trio, Uh, two acoustic guitars, a little hand percussion, and three voices. Okay, cool. So, and uh, the next song that we release on December 1st for the new album called High Walk is actually a strong elements of bluegrass in it. Mm, neat. Okay. It'll be right. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, and then, um, so, you know, I guess from a personal standpoint, I find this music, the quote Americana uh, slash country and bluegrass mm-hmm. to be more intimate. Mm-hmm. If you will, sure, yeah, yeah. Instead of fronting a seven-piece sure. band that I love, yeah. Oh my goodness, we have the greatest players, the greatest guys, we're yeah. all brothers. Yeah, I love the music. I love performing, but you know, it's kind of like uh, you go to the same restaurant every night. Now and then, you want to want to go somewhere different, right? Yeah. Well, and the, the seven-piece type of uh, of uh, production, you can't typically do that in somebody's living room you know aka no. the house concert no. whereas you no. the kind of music that you play the acoustic americana bluegrass roots it lends itself you know your word more intimate it's that it, it allows you to move in closer and um and connect it, it, a little yeah. differently yeah uh, well it's funny to say that on uh, the weather here in pittsburgh is gorgeous the next few days mm-hmm. so i just got a call this morning from a guy said hey we're 
uh, Monday afternoon, uh, we're, we're getting together a bunch of friends on the patio and probably the last good day, can you come out and play some acoustic music? I said, yeah, what time do you want us? Hmm. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's a tiny PA, a nice PA, and yeah. three players, and, yeah. and it's like, we'll be there from one thirty to 3.30. Yeah. Whereas to do that with the band, I, you know, I'd have seven guys to round up. I've got close to two thousand dollars in sound and lights. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's just a whole different uh, element. So you mentioned uh, started with poetry and and uh, mm-hmm. progressed into songwriting. Do you have a particular um, formula or process that you do when you when you want to write a song? And especially if you're looking at putting together an album, do you write for that record, or do you get enough songs together and decide you have enough to put together a record? Well, that's a, that's a great question. As you know, everybody does it a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I have an idea and a concept, or I'll call it a thematic approach. So uh, I'm not a guitar player. I'm not a pianist. I'm a, I'm a singer. Okay. I write lyrics, and I really pride myself on composition and arrangement. So I, I might sketch up some rough lyrics, um, for example, this next song that we're going to release is called High Wire, and I have some friends, some dear friends, that have debilitating diseases, mm-hmm. like MS and mm. Parkinson's okay. and muscular dystrophy that suck. Mm. And I've been, you know, these are very close friends, so I get a, I get an intimate view of the struggles they have, and yeah. I look at their life as a balancing act. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, in my mind, I'm like, I got this concept for lyrics, and I know that it... It's high wire, it's the balancing of these struggles, and uh, my main collaborator on the acoustic stuff is a guy named David Granati, who's also a producer, and I, I throw out ideas, and he starts strumming, and it, and it comes together. I'm blessed with great collaborators. Uh, I prefer to hear music first, and then write lyrics and melody later. Mm. So I, I go to people uh, like David, and and just say, what What do you got? Do you got any pieces of music? Do you got any ideas for this theme? Yeah. And then that'll drive the lyrics, and, and I also collaborate a whole lot. But I'm not a solo artist. Mm, okay. I yeah. can't stand that statement. I read I that in your uh, press notes. I, I like what you said about that. And I, you know, it's, it's something that I hadn't really thought of before, but you're right. I mean, just because somebody gets out on stage with a mic and a guitar, um, one would make the assumption that that whatever you see is something that they've done by themselves, and there are there are those that have done that. But in many cases, there's other people behind the scenes that's contributed to that process in some way. Oh my goodness! You know, you think about that. You know, I'm 59 years old, so the greats in my world of Bob Seger and James Taylor and Springsteen and those cats, and I know you know, they, they often call them solo artists. They're nowhere near solo artists. Mm-hmm. they got producers and engineers. And what about the guys in the band that contribute all those parts? Right, sure, sure. And they give that, bring that thing to life. Right. Uh, I Probably the closest to a solo artist in the early, you know, would have been Dylan in the early days mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when he recorded exactly what he strummed on the guitar and then, uh, right. you know, and it was just five minutes of poetry kind of thing. Yeah. Or the old folk guys, you know, like yeah. John Prines. Yeah, yeah. But, so, uh, no, I collaborate. I collaborate out of need and desire. So I, I need to collaborate because I, I don't play an instrument. Mm-hmm. But I, have strong, I have a strong vision a musical context, so I need to collaborate, and I find that it makes me better, and it makes the song better. Yeah, and and the result of that, of course, has been you, you've been able to have a recording career and um, mm-hmm. new record, brick by brick. What number of of recordings are this? Is this for you? What number of album is it? Ah, uh, well, between the band and my own uh, stuff, I've done away from the band. I think this is, uh, and with the Businessman Band of years ago, I think this will be my 20th album. Wow, wow. That's awesome. And since since 1990, 1997. And have yeah. you had a, a hand in in all of the songs that have been on all of those albums? Or are they... Um, I've, had a, I've had a voice right. in right. all the songs. Right. Yeah, I've had a voice. But the early days, my good friend uh, Bill Hibbert, 
who was in the band. We had a band called The Businessman, and my buddy Tim Adley, who's still with me, he would produce it. And, you know, I'd have, I mean, it was all new to me. Mm -hmm. So I maybe would make a comment and maybe wrote lyrics on a couple songs. Yeah. Um, but I would, you know, I would sing them and, and record them and perform them. I would say that where I started to take charge was probably uh, my first acoustic r record called Reflections of an Average Soul, which was 2001. Mm, okay. That's where I had like a real, you know, I, I'd learned a lot from these other guys, and I wanted to do some stuff that was more personal. Mm hmm. Hmm. Tell me about the new record. You, we were talking off well, brick air, brick. And, right? And you said you kind of had yeah. a unique process of getting that out. Yeah, I, I, I think it's unique, but of course, almost everyone's releasing singles. So this is an album that is uh, will be built over the course of the next fourteen months. Hmm. Um, and the first of each month, we're going to release a new track with content, a uh, story about how the song was created, lyrics. Um, also, the meaning behind it and a video. Mm, cool. So the you know it's kind of weird when you say, "Well, we released a new album on November 1st. <laughs> well, in reality, we we released the news that uh, there's a project called Brick by Brick, and the first song that has been released and video is called America. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we thought the timing, <laughs> in light of. Uh, you know, the current situation sure. yeah. uh, of yeah. strife and conflict was appropriate. I, I took a quick listen to that before we got on the phone, and I, I um, mm -hmm. th there's this uh, element even of um, uh, the, uh, the the American Indian sound in there. Was that yes. intentional? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you for picking up on that. Well, because America is a melting pot, and, and um, who's had it worse? American into the Native Americans. Yeah, yeah. You know, first of all, I love this country, and I believe, uh, on whole, we are the greatest country in the world with the greatest people. And the song is about hope and peace. It's not a protest song, mm -hmm. even though some could view it that way. It's not a song to pinpoint any political uh, sector to say, you're wrong and I'm right. Mm -hmm. Um if you get a chance to see the video, which was produced by my co-writer, and yeah. Frank Ferrara, yeah. uh, it ends with the word peace. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we use the megaphone to represent protest, to represent anger. Mm. We use the elements of Native American music to, um, to look at it as a homeland where all people, especially indigenous people, are... Or should be loved and should be treasured. Mm -hmm. they're, they're certainly not. We stick them on reservation and say, here's a casino and go drink. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. Uh, so, it's actually a song that Frank and I recorded on, on an album, Wayward Soul, like nine years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, but it, I always wanted to do something different with it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I called Frank and said that if he was interested and willing as a co-writer, and uh, he was, so we're really we're really proud of it. The upcoming tracks uh, were, I have already six songs in the can, so and videos that are done. Okay. So those will be released each month, and um, you know, so we're already covered through May, I think. So and you you been, haven't actually recorded April. the other mm -hmm. half or whatever of the record yet, even. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. So we're now working on. We're working on one track at a time, and believe me, we've worked on songs that we thought were going to be good, and they, they went in the trash can. Hmm, okay. Um, so we already have recorded and mastered um, with videos underway, if not completed, five more tracks. Hmm, okay. Um, so we're now working on it, and it's really nice when you don't have any time pressure. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's I, actually, I wanna... you're actually, uh, you couldn't buy the whole album if you wanted to right now, so you you, you are you kind of creating and releasing along the way, that's cool. That's right, and it, it'll be an accumulation, and then when you get to the end, um, the concept is that there's 14 tracks, and you know, there might be more, mm -hmm. there might be less, mm -hmm. uh, and there'll be, there'll be uh, uh, singles, and there'll be no lyrical thematic approach. I did that on my last album, Love, Lust, and Other Wreckage, 
which was all about relationships. Mm -hmm. Every song had a tie-in with the song either before or after, mm. and the lyrical content was very consistent. Um, you know, we released America on November 1st, and I've mentioned to you that December 1st is a song called High Wire. Mm -hmm. uh, January 1st is a song called No One Wears a Watch Anymore. Mm. Uh, yeah, so this material is going to be all over the map. Yeah, okay. So when, when the world opens back up and artists get a chance to get back out on the road, what does that look like for you? Do you have a, a plan in mind for what it will look like to get this music out to people? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I have two plans in mind. I've got, I, I am hoping and, and being very, very prayerful that the Needs Hotel Band could do some festival stuff next summer. Hmm, cool. I mean, that's our sweet spot in yeah. front of three, 4,000 people rocking the house and yeah. everybody having a great time. Uh, and then for this acoustic trio stuff, I'd really like to get in the car with my other two uh, partners and do a coffee shop or listening room tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'd through Ohio, cool. you know, yeah. and, and, uh, you know, Michigan and, and then loop back around. I really would like to get this music, uh, in it, some intimate settings. Yeah. Where people actually listen and care about the music. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So the album is, Brick by brick, if people want to dial in with you here and kind of get involved with the releases and check out the one that's out and some of your previous music, what's the best way to, to catch up with you? Well, they can go to johnvento.com. That's uh, J-O-H-N-V-E-N-T-O, johnvento.com. Uh, and there's connections there with the Needs Hotel Band, my previous albums, the new stuff with Brick by Brick. So it's great place to find everything and um, of course all the other social media places, iTunes like Spotify those things yeah all that yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. good. okay good well, thank you, John. This is cool. I, I really like what you're doing, you. and uh, I like your music, and uh, I, I like the concept. It's it's neat, so I, I wish you well with it. Thank you, and thank you for uh, supporting independent artists. I, uh, until I met Michael Stover, I never realized what a wonderful, how many wonderful people like you are out there supporting and promoting folks like me that, uh, you know, are are very, very independent with no label or anything like that, but still creating some good stuff. Yeah, thank you, John. I appreciate that very much. Well, God bless my friend, and I, and I, I also appreciate you having me on tonight. Thanks again for tuning in to this episode of Americana Music Profiles. Find us on iTunes at Americana Music Profiles and on the Internet at AmericanaRhythm.com.